welcome to Tune In Tuesday at 2. So glad that you're here and joining me. Is I want to give you a second part to the demo from last week, which was I showed you how to do glue encased tissue and napkins. And I got so many comments from so many of you that you'd either tried similar things, but one significant, one person uh, commented, they said, and actually her name is Isa, I-S-A, Dor, D-O-R. You can look her up on Instagram, Isa Dor. And she said, aren't you concerned that the glue that I was using might discolor over time? And I went, oh, hadn't you thought of that? <laughs> so I went down a major research rabbit hole I actually emailed uh, Golden because they have a really good uh, kind of a research department. You know, they can actually answer a lot of questions for you. Um, and then I started experimenting with lots of alternatives to glue. And I'm going to show you what I found because I have a lot of alternatives now. So I'm going to take you off of my little pedestal here. And you're coming over to my little demo area. So I'm just going to put you on my little thing here okay so first um, so glue actually does discolor over time that is what I discovered but I have I did six additional experiments experiments with different products and it started with Maj Podge, Maj Podge. I was thinking hmm maybe this will work and it does make beautiful papers I think this is uh, quite lovely I'm gonna show you of course, it's sticking together, but it doesn't stick permanently. I mean, I think that's gorgeous. I love that. This is uh, with tissue. It's wonderful. The problem is it actually does discolor. Now, it's not going to discolor right away. And by the way, neither will glue. White uh, PVA glue or Elmer's glue, it takes a very long time for it to happen. Um, in fact, Terry, you helped me with this because Terry actually did an experiment with Mod Podge as well. And she found an article on Google that said, yes, this is not the greatest thing for this because... You know, if you, by the way, if you don't want to sell your work or, I mean, if you're just doing it for the pure pleasure of it, I think this is a fantastic option. But because I do want to sell my work, I want to make my art as um, longevity as possible. You know, give it a chance to live a long time. So I, I ruled this one out. So Mod Podge is a no-go for me. But I went to uh, five other products that I think are pretty good. Uh, this is actually the one that Isa Dor uses. I'm, I know I'm saying your name wrong, Isa, so I apologize. Um, GAC 400 makes a beautiful paper. This is actually tissue paper. And I tinted this, by the way, with a little bit of blue. Now, since um, I did this experiment with GAC 400, um, I heard back from Golden. In fact, I just heard back from them today. And they actually don't recommend this product. Um, this is a pretty brittle paper, although I love this paper. Um, so I'm not really sure why it was a very complicated explanation. Let me just tell you that. Um, but since they said this is not probably the best product for this, I kept going. Um, and I also tried this GAC 800. Now this is actually something you would put in, uh, let's say heavy body paints to make it more liquidy, which is why I bought it. But I said, well, maybe this would also work for this glue, uh, glue encasing thing. So this is, uh, using it with a napkin, which I, some of you may recognize from last week. And this is just a tissue paper. Now, if, I don't know if you can see this, but it's very plasticky looking, which is not the look I really like. Now I could put some matte medium on there and get rid of some of that sheen, but it's still not exactly the look I'm looking for. But if you've got this, it works. It just doesn't, it, you know, there's other products that I liked better. Let's move on to another one. By the way, I'm gonna show you a demo as well, not just show you the product, the end products. Um, this is glazing medium, which I've always loved um, because it actually uh, tints. Uh, you can add, add this to acrylic paint and tint things. I'm actually going to be demoing this in Collage Joy, the class that's coming up. So this is the paper that it made. Now, uh, this is, well, let me say first is any of these mediums, can you can add water to them. And it actually helps them to add water. And this is actually what Golden told me. So the, the less you use it in its full form, the better it will hold up over time. 
So I actually did add water to this one, and I think this is really beautiful. It's a tissue, and it does have, uh, it was water and glaze mixed together. That's how I did it. And again, I will show you exactly how I did it for those of you who weren't here last time. Um, and it looks like a pretty sturdy paper. I like this quite a bit. This is the same thing. Actually, let me show you a comparison of these. Oops, great, just tore this. Okay, here you go. So this one was done with glaze and water. And this one was done full strength and I just ripped it. Um, you may not see the difference, but this one is, has a really glossy sheen to it. It's almost plasticky. Whereas this one has a really matte finish. This is glaze and water. So this is what I would use going forward. And again, that's what uh, Golden actually recommended was mixing it with water. Um, uh, and they said that has longer longevity. Now here's the thing with longevity is that they said any medium, gloss medium, and I'm gonna show you a few others, any of them could break down depending on what you put it on. So this is a napkin. The napkin I'm sure isn't um, archival. So over time, this has the potential of actually you know, discoloring over time. However, it would be a very long time. The same thing with the glue or the Mod Podge. Um, this is a better chance of holding up over a long period of time. So, you know, if I'm going to do this, you know, I'm going to use, if I'm going to be a mixed media artist, which I am, a lot of most of you are, I'm going to use the best materials I can to prevent them from discoloring. Now, um, I also tried gloss medium. Now, this actually came in a, a regular bottle. I actually put these in condiment bottles because it's easy to squirt down. This is probably my least favorite of all of them because it comes out very plasticky, really plasticky. I don't like the look of that. It also sticks to each other. Now, what was interesting though is uh, when Golden got back to me today, they said that gloss medium is actually better than gesso to prime canvas, prime paper. Um, and then you can put gesso over it. So they said uh, gloss medium first and then gesso. Uh, and that will prevent uh, more discoloration. Now, that, that's for the paper. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing from now on is putting gloss medium first, then gesso, um, just to support the paper in terms of keeping it from yellowing. But in terms of this process, it's a no-go. I don't like this one at all. Now, the one that I like the best came from this product. Now, this is Liquitex, but it could be golden. doesn't matter. Um, this is matte medium. I buy this in very large quantities because I love this product. Um, again, I put it in these condiment bottles. But this is what, what I'm going to be using going forward because I just like the result. Now, I think any of the ones I just showed you worked. Um, but if I'm going to do this kind of process, I'm going to devote... I'm, going to use one product. You know, using 10 different products doesn't really make sense to me. Actually, that was six different products. So this one has, has a really nice feel to it, almost like a fabric feel, to tell you the truth. And it's matte. Here's another example of it. I just think that's really beautiful. And I just tinted this with, you know, I, after I uh, put it the, uh, after I put the glue on, I just lightly put a glaze of, um, of, pa of paint, watered down paint. So I think these are beautiful. So this is what I would use. Um, I am going to be using long term is the matte medium. Now, I also, many people had uh, commented um, during last month, last month, last week's uh, tune in about embedding things into the tissue paper. So this is actually two pieces of tissue paper with uh, leaves in between it. So uh, Susan Nash did this. There was a number of other people. Nikki, um, Kat, many people had some kind of version of this. Um, so th these right here are actually these little leaves. Um, if you can see this. Um, the flatter the object, the better it works, I found. So I thought this was actually quite attractive. I like this a lot, and I'll probably be using this in a collage. Now, this is an example of a not flat thing. So this is actually Spanish moss. You get it in a bag from the craft store. And because it, it, it doesn't fly flat, basically. So it does, I mean, I th if you like that look, it worked, but I couldn't completely conceal it. So you can see there's a lot of air pockets in here, which is perfectly fine. Just not something that I really wanna put in my, my artwork. Now, this one I love. This is with watered down matte medium on tissue. And if you see here, this is actually, I'll show you what it is. 
These, this is a uh, piece of mica that I got while um, hiking. I collected a whole bunch of these and I actually put them in a, I actually glued them in a collection. It was a spaciousness collection or pure joy, one of those. But I think it's really pretty in here. Now, if you look at the back side of this, um, you can actually, I don't think you can see, but I actually started scratching off some of the paper and you can see the mica right in the paper. So I thought that was pretty cool too. So I might even, you know, think about using the back side. This is shiny, by the way. Um, and I don't really like shiny, but I could put a layer of matte medium um, and I could reduce the shine off this and it would work. Now, this was also, I think this was a suggestion from Susan Nash. Um, these are washers. These are uh, rusted washers, which I think are pretty cool. And the backside also looks cool. I like the backside better, but this is glossy, which is interesting. This is matte medium, but when you put it against something, so this is this was the top and it's against... Um, kind of find something I can show you, but it was against the actual, like say it was against this, it was against a, a plastic uh, base. When you pull it up, everything on the bottom side is going to be a gloss, even though I didn't put gloss on it. Um, but I did start putting matte medium just to check it out. I'm thinking this is the one. No, I can't find it. I thought maybe I'd try matte medium on this one, <clears throat> but I love, I love these, this is how this is encased. It's not completely encased though. There are some air pockets here, but I think this would be a really interesting piece of collage fodder. And then I tried feathers. By the way, I tried a whole bunch of things. Um, I looked at a bunch of YouTube videos. Also, people have made suggestions. And it was Susan Nash had done some different things. So I specifically want to show you how to do this. How do you embed um, things into the tissue paper, which is basically the same method for doing this. I just put an extra layer on top. So let me pull out my little demo here. So <clears throat> for those of you who were with me last week, I'm assuming a lot of you were, um, what you put this on is really important. This is a dry erase, a dry erase calendar that I just cut up um, and I'm using it for, for this process. But I heard, <laughs> this is what I heard a lot of, from a lot of you about because a lot, a lot of you experimented with this or you already done it. Um, Gwen Barton said you could use trash bags, specifically uncoated trash bags, but I think coated would probably work as well. Um, Kat said she used a baking mat, and I almost bought one because it looked really cool, but I already have enough, but baking mats would work. Freezer paper works, as does parchment paper. Thank you, Terry. And aluminum foil works, and plastic file folders work. So I'm sure there's another dozen things we could probably come up with. So you don't have to have this. That's the long and the short of it. So the way you do this, I'm in going to put tissue on this, and I'm going to start, I'm going to put matte medium I'm going to put a little, little bit of a layer of matte medium here. Just spread this out. And usually I crumple the tissue, but because I want the feathers to be the thing I notice the most, I'm going to put this on as... I mean, it's still going to have wrinkles, but I'm going to do less wrinkles than I did for all the other papers because I really like the look um, when I'm trying to highlight what I'm putting in the middle of it as opposed to highlight the wrinkles because I like the wrinkles. But in this case, I really want the, um, the feathers to be the highlight. So I just make sure... I got a lot of matte medium, and then I'm gonna put a lot matte, a lot of matte medium on the top of this. Now, if I was just doing the process of encasing tissue paper, this is what I would do. This is where I would end it, and I would let this dry. For me, this takes 24 hours. Um, someone wrote and they said they I put it in the sun. It only took an hour. That's a great idea, <laughs> except that I don't want to go downstairs to put this in the sun. Um, but that is definitely something that would speed this process up. But I'm very patient. So now, then I pulled out some feathers. By the way, these feathers I got, I'm pretty sure I got them off Amazon. I got a huge bag of them. I've been using them probably for like five <laughs> years. Now, the thing with with any of these things where you're embedding something, you want it to be pretty flat. So f this is a real feather that has a little bit of curve to it. So... You want to break the spine a little bit so it can curve down. So I'm just breaking it a little bit. And I'm just in letting it sit there. 
This one's already flat. Um, someone asked what I would actually do with all of these things. You know, I don't use, like when I had this paper done, I won't use this whole paper as is. I mean, more than likely I won't. What I'll do is I'll tear it up, you know, and use a little piece of it. You know, it'll go into many different collages. It'll be just an added element in a collage as opposed to, you know, the, the main kind of focal point of the collage or the whole collage. I wouldn't make a whole collage out of these. Although I'm sure you, no reason why you couldn't, but that's not how my art usually works. We all have our own style and I didn't break, you gotta break the spine of these feathers. I actually bought these feathers originally um, to do encaustic work. And I have, I don't do encaustics anymore, although I love encaustics, but I can get a similar effect without all the labor of encaustics. Because I think encaustics takes a lot of time. Okay, so I got my feathers down. And now I'm going to put another piece of tissue paper on top of this. And again, I'm going to try to lay it so it's as close as possible to the other one. And I'm going to put more matte medium on top of this. Because I really, I want those feathers to be fully encased in the tissue paper itself. By the way, I've gotten too aggressive in doing this sometimes, and I'll, I'll rip this oh, rip, rip this, but I don't really care. Uh, I like holes and all this stuff. Now, one thing I did um, learn is you got to kind of press the air bubbles out because this is not a complete seal. So there is, I mean, there's still going to be air bubbles because it's a 3D object, but I'm just pressing out as much of the air bubbles as I can, and then I'll let it dry. Okay. So that's all there is to it. But I, as, because I like being Julia Child with my demos, here's one that's already dry. So I got it. I have glue all over myself. So I'll show you how this works. This is I, this one I did yesterday. And, oops, I forgot to do something. Hold on. So for those of you <laughs> who were with me last week, you know, one of the important things here is you got to, um, you got to kind of push the edges in. Otherwise, it's very hard to pull this up when you're when it's all dry so i'm just gonna finish the edges a little bit so that this is actually a usable piece at the end just so this gives me something to um kind of i'm not gonna do the rest of it i think that'll be enough so the reason i remembered that is because i saw the, the these edges are pulled up you can see this they're all kind of bunched up at the end which makes it much easier to pull this up so Just getting it started is a key here. Just getting it started without ripping it, because once you get it started, it'll just come up really in one big piece. Theoretically, at least. Because of the fe feathers, that the end of the feathers could poke through. So that's why I gotta be careful. Like this stopped coming up with it. Okay. And this might be easier if I also just take this. Yeah, let me just try it all the way. I'm always nervous doing it on camera. But it looks like it's going to all come out in one piece. There we go. And that's pretty cool. People will say, how in the world did you do that? Now, on the back, um, I actually like the backs better for some odd reason. Um, but again, I would have to put a, a layer of matte medium. For me, because I don't like that glossy sheen on it. I like a... A matte finish. Now, I also did this. Oh, I didn't show you. Oh, I did. I did. Okay. Let me show you a few others that I did. So this I encased. Um, I encased this is just embroidery thread that I encased. And this is a cereal bag. So I will just pull this one up and see what we got. I know, Nikki, you tried this. And I know Susan Nash had done a bunch of these. And that's pretty interesting. I'm not sure. I had to... Kind of live with that for a little bit. Putting a little more paint on it might be really interesting. Um, I also tried this with, um, you can see this, there's like, this is like sequins that you would sew into something. So this is, you know, this again, this is two pieces of tissue paper with the sequins in the middle. This is like the big reveal here. So, I mean, that's interesting. 
I like the sequence in it, actually. You know, compared to it not having the sequence, I think that's cool. Now, I want to show you one more thing. So, I do, I make, a, I use a lot of tissue as blotting paper, you know. So, as I'm making collage papers, those of you who have taken Collage Kickstart, you probably saw me, you know, I'll put a piece of tissue paper over a piece of wet collage fodder and just soak up the, the extra paint and it makes a beautiful piece in, in, in itself. You know, so if I put this one down on a collage, you're not going to see all that white. You're just going to see this really interesting blotting paper. But I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I use the same process of putting two of these together? Like this one's okay and this one's okay. I would use either one of them by themselves in a collage. But if I glued them together, what would happen? So that's what we're going to do right now. Oops. So I'll just put some glue down. I always put more than I need, probably. But it's kind of like magical to see how the tissues are going to layer, you know, on top of each other. And by the way, if some, I, I kind of glanced and saw, saw a couple comments, and I will look at them as soon as I finish this last piece. It's kind of hard to do. Um, it's hard to look at the comments at the same time I do this. Now, what I want to do is use whatever I consider to be the top, but I want to lay it face down. So this one seems the more vibrant side, so I'm going to put that face down. And again, I'm not doing any kind of wrinkling, although I certainly could. Wrinkling is I just like kind of bunch it up because I really, I want the, I want the focal point here to be the kind of the, the papers being melded together as opposed to the wrinkles because the wrinkles are cool all by themselves. So I'm just making sure that I've got a good layer of, I didn't actually put enough matte medium down, to tell you the truth. Okay, so there you go. And then I'm going to put just another layer on there. So this, you know, if I was encasing something, I could put sequins in on here right now. That would be pretty interesting too. And again, whatever I consider, like that, I consider the top. But I want them to be vibrant side to vibrant side. So I put the vibrant side down. Now I'm going to put the vibrant side up. So that on both sides of this, there is potentially something interesting. And then again, I put another coat of this on top to seal them together. And, you know, you can obviously already see the other print. And there are some wrinkles in here, which I, you know, of course, I like wrinkles in art. <laughs> because it does... It adds some interesting interest. Now, obviously, I can't show you the end result of this right now because I got to wait till it dries, which will take till tomorrow. Um, but I will put it on a story. So I'll show you what the end result of these two fused together. But you can kind of tell what it's going to look like right now. You know, so actually, today I just went through all my tissue papers and I said, well, which what two are not like spectacular that I'd be willing to tr experiment with the fuse? And let me show, I'm going to show you the end result of this because I made one yesterday that I thought was pretty, pretty beautiful. So I'll have to wait till that one dries. But here is the end result of it. So this is two tissue papers. Both sides are actually independent of each other. Now, by the way, I could have actually, this is the, you know, so it's, it's vibrant side or what I call so right side. And this is the right side. I could have put the, I could have done it just the opposite. I could have put that one the other way. And then that would have actually shown through. And that would have been pretty cool too. But I love that. And there's absolutely 100% chance that I'll use that in a collage. What's really cool, I didn't show you this earlier, that you can tear these really easy. So this is a really, it's a really good piece of collage fodder in terms of being usable. There you are. The little computer thing said everybody was paused or I was paused. Anyways. Um, I love the two together too. Hi, Terry, and thank you for all the help you gave me this week. So many people gave me good suggestions that kind of led me down multiple rabbit holes. Um, you can use cheesecloth by itself or layer it onto tissue paper. Love that idea. Thank you for sharing that. Hello, Tammy. I want to try glitter. Yeah, glitter might be really cool. I like the sequin look a lot. I'm not a, uh, a real, I'm not a, I'm not a glossy kind of person, so I'm not sure if I want sequins. You should have, st 
I know I should have stock in Matt Medium. What's interesting about Matt Medium is that, like, if you talk to Nicholas Wilton and a lot of artists, they always recommend Gloss Medium because, and actually Golden does too, because it it seals better and it also doesn't. It, apparently, Matt Medium has like a film in it that um, lessens the color, dilutes the color. I don't know what you call that, um, but I love it and I don't see any difference, you know, in the end effect of using gloss medium versus matte medium. Although the advice of using, you know, when you gesso your, everyone gessos their paper or their, um, their canvas, Golden says you should be putting gloss medium and then gesso, which is pretty much what I'm gonna be doing in the future. Hello, Susan. You have star confetti, and this would be an amazing process. Hmm. Please do it, Tammy, and show us. Anything else? Any other questions? And by the way, I would, Julia Child, yes. Have, have any of you seen the show? I think it's an HBO special, I think. If it's not HBO, it's just on regular TV, but it's called Julia. It's my favorite show of the whole world. So if you haven't seen Julia, it's about Julia Child's life. And like, she's my now, my new idol. I'm not even into cooking, but I just think she's such an amazing soul and how she made her career happen. It started like age 51 you know, became famous after that. Florist cellophane. So is it Jax? So is that, so florist cellophane, would that be what you would put as the under? Like that's what you would glue it onto? Or is that something you would uh, do it like, um, like the tissue paper and the napkins? I'm curious if that's what you mean. Can you use palette paper as a base? You know, you'd have to try it. Actually, that, that's a very logical suggestion, Elizabeth. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. Um, that would be a good suggestion. I, don't, I can't believe I didn't try it. You know, last week I tried um, a, a Yupo paper. And Yupo paper has a similar feel to palette paper, thinking that would absolutely be the way to do it. And Yupo paper is the worst way to do it. So you never know. You know, it all depends on what kind of coating the palette paper has. You know, if it like the wax paper worked horrible, it actually came up onto the tissue paper. So you'd have to experiment and see if it worked. Matte medium over the, so this is Leanne. You can put matte medium over the glued papers you made. Would that keep the, oh, oh, good question, Leanne. So according to Golan, not necessarily. So the, the fact that I'm watering it down is a key part of this. So in fact, what you saw me do, I did it full strength but I actually have a whole container of matte medium and water together. And they said the more watered down it is, the more less, less likely it's going to discolor over time. But even matte medium, gloss medium, um, any of these products actually could discolor, but they said it really has to do with what you add it to. Like if I'm putting it on an old book, the old book is not acid free, um, even though my medium is, potentially. They said even that, so the, the way they interact together could actually make it discolor. But the thing is, it's going to discolor very slow. There was an artist named Anne Baldwin uh, that I used to follow years ago. She's not on Instagram, uh, but her work is very similar to mine um, in that she uses a lot of old books, you know, old, old illustrations, and she's perfectly fine with it yellowing over time. And although she's never actually seen it because it takes a long time, but she said, that's kind of like the evolution of the artwork. I said, oh, that's a good explanation for it. Anyways, let's see if there's any other comments, but please, please, please. Um, if you have suggestions or YouTubes that, you know, things you've seen that you would love to have me explore, I'll do the experimentation for you because I go down a rabbit hole big time. Um, please let me know what would be interesting to you because I aim to please. Anyways, I think that's it. Thank you for joining me again. Many of you come every single week and I just want you to know I am incredibly grateful because you guys are my art buddies and uh, my inside peeps. So I will see you next week. I have no idea when I'm gonna demo. Uh, sometimes I don't figure, I don't, doesn't, I actually kind of, I pray to God. <laughs> so what should I be demo? And I'm just, I just trust that something's gonna pop into my head or I'll dream about it, which often is what happens. Anyways, I will see you next Tuesday at 2 for another Tune In Tuesday. Thanks for coming, everyone. Bye.